Hello everyone, this is my presentation on effective guidelines and preoperative teaching to increase MPO compliance. The problem arises when patients are non-compliant with the instructions given of nothing to eat or drink after midnight, MPO. The patient and the surgeon becomes frustrated when surgery is canceled by anesthesia um, due to non-compliance. The, the, the risk of eating or drinking after midnight when having surgery is pulmonary pulmonary aspiration, which can lead to death. The new recommendations on MPO guidelines um, were not being followed by my facility when this, this project was initiated. These are the current recommendations um, that facilities should be following. Fasting from clear liquids is recommended two hours prior to surgery. Fasting from a light meal is recommended six hours prior to surgery and fasting from fatty foods or fried foods is recommended eight hours prior to surgery. For infants, fasting from infant formula is recommended six hours, and breast milk is recommended four hours prior to surgery. These guidelines are now being followed by my facility. Quality variance, the, quality, the current guidelines are not being followed in my facility. Um, our, guidelines are NP, our guidelines were NPO after midnight for all patients, regardless of the time of their surgery. Um, our guidelines have led to non-compliance by patients. They feel it's too long of a time to be without food or drink, resulting in cancellations of surgeries. Here is a picture showing the guidelines that I spoke about earlier. And this is our old recommendations um, to the right and to the left is our new. The root cause analysis. Um, MPO compliance is affected by preoperative teaching methods. Um, the nurse should, should be assessing the learner's knowledge. Mutual respect should occur between the patient and the nurse. Education by the registered nurse should be happening to all patients, not by um, any medical assistant or other um, uh, employees. Guidelines of MPO after midnight, uh, lack of adherence due to too many hours prior to surgery, and lack of adherence due to certain medications and health problems. Um, I hear a lot of patients complain of dry mouth because of certain medications they give. So this was an issue when they were told nothing to eat or drink after midnight and their surgery was not till 8 a.m. Their, their dry mouth really bothered them. The scope of the problem. Um, the problem was the current our current guidelines, which were NPO after midnight, um, can and leading to too many, the patients being too many hours without any food or drink, which can cause uh, dehydration, insulin resistance, electrolyte imbalance, nausea and vomiting, irritability, and confusion. Our preoperative teaching method um, needed to be changed. It was being done by a medical assistant, and time there were times when the medical assistant uh, did not know certain um, questions could not be answered when a patient had certain questions about medications and why they needed to be NPO. Um, regurgitation of 50 milliliters of acidic uh, gastric contents can lead to problems with gas exchange resulting in death. This is um, so, an example of something that a nurse can um, educate patients um, that medical assistants cannot. And the improvement goal is to decrease the number of surgeries canceled or delayed due to complications, not, excuse me, due to non-compliance with NPO instructions. The solution to the problem is our guidelines were changed. Um, the new guidelines are now followed. The patients are able to have clear liquids uh, two hours prior to surgery, um, and they are able to have a light meal six hours prior to surgery. Um, we are now educating our patients uh, through phone interview three days prior to surgery by a registered nurse. Um, there is a script that they follow. They explain in detail what food and drink are allowed by mouth and when. Explain the reason why, why NPO is important and why the rest rest restrictions exist. Um, inform our patients that a lack of adherence to these instructions will lead in cancellation or delay of surgery. We implemented all these um, processes. We changed the protocol. Um, the, we, there was an in-service done with registered nurses to present the new protocol for preoperative teaching. 
the script for the nurses um, was presented and, and um, instructed on how to follow it. And um, these new guidelines um, first needed to be discussed and approved by the head of anesthesia. There was some resistance from other anesthesia providers to follow these new guidelines. A lot of times people don't like change, but in the end with the research that was presented, everybody was on board to make this, um, to implement this, this new NPO status and guidelines. And in service involving all team members was done. The analysis outcome, there was a research article that um, when it, this, when three day, when educating patients three days prior to surgery by a nurse, um, their cancellation rates due to NPO uh, status dropped from 18 to eight patients. So that's a pretty good um, drop, um, meaning more patients were compliant with the NPO status. Um, in my facility, there's also been a notable decrease in cancellations um, with the new guidelines and protocol for NPO. The steps that we will be following to continue in this um, new NPO guidelines is nurses will continue and only registered nurses will continue to call patients three days prior to surgery and provide, provide education on NPO guidelines. We will monitor the process of the new protocol to make sure that we are still, um, it's still working effectively and it's decreasing our numbers of cancellations due to NPO. Um, annual in-service on preoperative teaching will be done. All new employees will be oriented on the method that, of preoperative education that we use. And we will continue to follow new anesthesia you know, NPO status guidelines. These are my references. Um, hope everyone enjoyed my presentation. Thank you. Thank you.